move on to the almighty LFO, which is the final piece in our puzzle of this modulator section. And where better to start uh, illustrating this than a wobble snapshot? Let's take snapshot 13, snapshot bank 3. It's called warp wobble. I'm going to turn down the master on this a bit. These wobble snapshots tend to be pretty loud, and they, they move between very low and very high frequencies, so you can hear what I'm talking about there. Now, one thing you might be asking yourself is, why is this rate knob moving back and forth? I'm, you can't see me, but I'm not actually turning this. The reason it's doing this is because it's being modulated by one of the macro controls. So I'm going to give you a peek behind the curtain here before we move on to explain the rest of this LFO and just give you a sense for what's to come in the next video. This macro control section, as we've described, has a bunch of these macro controls that we saw in the A panel view, source, variation, filter, and space. And these are keyed to a global LFO, which is distinct from the, LF, the polyphonic LFO that we see in the B panel view. Right? It's a global LFO here has these destinations over here, one of which is the macro control variation. You can see that it's modulating that by this uh, lighted kind of circle. We go back into the B view, and we, get, we have a list here of the modulation source destinations for this variation macro which is in turn being modulated by the LFO. I know this is a little confusing. We'll nail it down in the next section though, but I just want to give you a sense for why this LFO rate knob's twisting and turning. One of the destinations is LFO rate, and it's being negatively modulated by this variation knob. So when we click back over to modulators, we see that, right? That's why it's, it's moving back and forth, and that's why it's producing this interesting kind of off-balance wobble that we hear. Because it's moving between a, a lower and a higher rate for the LFO frequency. But that's just a, a side note, and again, we'll get into that uh, in more detail later on. Now, this LFO key tracking allows you to connect your uh, where you're playing in the piano roll to the frequency of the LFO. It tends to be, I, I find, pretty subtle, uh, a, a pretty subtle effect, but it's useful to have nonetheless, and um, that's what it is. Now, key sync and clock sync are some of the most confusing parameters, I believe, in this entire ensemble. But if you read the documentation, they seem confusing, but I think in fact, in actual fact, they are not that confusing. Key sync basically syncs the LFO phase to your playing, right? To note on events, as it says. Right? So it's going to it's going to start the LFO at the same place, it's going to re-trigger it every time I press a note or play a key. When I turn this off, however, you hear that the note on events are not re-triggering the LFO. And so it's just kind of free running. Now clock sync is going to connect the rate information or the rate selector to the global clock. So it's going to make that rate uh, subdivisions of the global uh, of the global clock setting. Now, one thing that's important to note with key sy key sync, at least, and these are a little finicky. You have to really get in right over them to turn them on and off. You see, I'm right over key sync, and it's turning on clock sync. Okay. So here we're re-triggering the LFO. If I move this phase. I'm moving the spot in the LFO wave that it is starting from when I have key sync activated. So it's the LFO phase uh, based on 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 re-triggering the LFO and key sync. And when I have all of these off, it's just kind of going nuts. Now the the documentation gets into more detail about what the behavior of the LFO is given the various permutations you can have, whether key sync's on or off, clock sync or both are on or both are off. So that's, I know, a little hard to understand, but if you get in there and you turn these on and turn them off, you'll get a sense for which one actually gives you the sound you want. And that's what's most important. Now I'm going to reset this snapshot, Warp Wobble, and we're going to come over here to our shape selector, which of course is much more familiar and frankly a lot more fun to use than some of these other parameters. So we have a sine wave all the way at left. We have a triangle wave kind of uh, almost at the top. And then at the 12 o'clock position, we have something between a triangle and a square wave. And now you can hear our wobble is becoming much more angular, right? As I move to the square wave, 
I could call that a psychedelic bubble. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's pretty out there. And then we have a random wave. I mean, this is the, the kind of robot speak from Doctor Who or something like that. The ring modulation type sound. Total chaos, or from like a 70s movie soundtrack. Uh, its symmetry is the symmetry of the wave itself. So in, in square wave, you can think of this as pulse width, right? The width of the pulse. Now, uh, we've covered phase. Fade determines how much, how long the LFO uh, takes to get to its full amplitude. So this is kind of an attack stage for the LFO in a sense. You can crank that up. Quite a cool effect because it takes, it, it produces this interesting building effect for the LFO and it takes a while to reach the height of its powers. But once it does, it sounds really quite cool. So uh, this has been, you know, a quick tour of this LFO. It's, it's a pretty deep, deep section. So you want to get familiar with it. And, um, and also bear in mind, as I mentioned before, there is a distinction to be made between this polyphonic LFO that we see here and the global LFO that's in the A panel. And once again, we will reinforce that in the next video. But uh, experiment and, and make sure that you have clear in your mind what the distinction is between these two. Because once we get into the kind of uber modulations and the macro controls, it'll be important for you to know that. And once you get it, it'll be a lot more fun to play with this instrument.